we are continuing to gather tools and information about mathematically working in uh, three dimensions, something or two dimensions in the case of this video, but building up some, a set of tools that we will be able to apply uh, to calculus of more than just a flat world. So what we're about to do is something that you might do in a course before calculus, um, and it's the study of the parametric equations of a line. Now, just as a quick little reminder to you all, we probably recognize the equation of a line. In the Western world, uh, this is called the slope and intercept equation, and this, is, this value m is the slope. If you're in a statistics class, this might be organized differently. This is sometimes called the standard equation of the line. Sometimes it's called the general equation of the line. This here is an equation of the line where you just need to know any given point and the slope. And one of these things um, all of these have in common is they don't really give you the official direction. It's more about providing you the path. So this is what the map looks like. These equations show you a picture of the map. What they don't tell you is, are you going this direction? Or are you going this direction? How fast are you going? What is the magnitude? None of these equations do that for, for a line. So the parametric equation of the line is the one we're interested in, in this little segment. And we're going to look at it in two dimensions. The concept is, if we were to look at the sketch of a graph of a line, there's the x-axis and there's the y-axis, and we were to begin at this point here, 0, 5, and we were to go in that specific direction. How could we write an equation of a line where it actually went that direction? And so since this isn't a course where you first introduce parametric equations, I'm going to just jump to the parametric equation. Um, there are two of them, so I should have said parametric equations. So you describe separately how X and Y behave. So the X equation begins somewhere, a starting value, an initial point. And then it changes, in this case it goes to the left. And if it's a line, it's going to go the same distance to the left for every second, for every unit of time. This would be the formal version of this. The Y part of this equation, well, you have a Y coordinate you're starting with. And in this case, it's going to go up and you want it to go up the same amount for every unit of time. So these would be called the equations right here. I wasn't doing a good job showing my paper. So for this particular problem here, for our example, my x equation and my y equation I know that the x value starts at 0, and I know that it goes, look, I mean, it, it goes left. Now, let's suppose it goes left. Uh, what do you want delta x to be? How about 3 units? So delta x will be a negative 3. Delta x will be a negative 3. So my statement here is that when x begins at 0 and then it goes left 3 units for every second, for every unit of time. Well, the y value starts at 5 and it goes up. It increases. It's increasing. Let's say that the y value increases by 2. So left 3 up 
two units. Then these would be the parametric equations of that line. And if you wanted to do a little bit of an investigation, if t is time, why don't you let t equal zero, and then you would find out if t equals zero that the x value is zero and the y value is five. You'd be at that point. And if t equaled one, one second later, you would subtract three and add two, you'd be at the point negative three, seven. That would be right here. And if t equaled two, you'd subtract three twice, negative six, and you'd add two twice, that'd be four and five is nine. Well, that point would be right here. So we'll get it into it more in the next chapter, but the direction is a huge deal of vectors. And I'm clearly going that direction of the line. So indicate direction. Indicate the direction. Now, let's peek at one more example. X equals 1 plus 6t. Y equals 2 minus 4t. If we wanted to look at the graph of that line, you could do it a whole bunch of different ways. You could start by plotting points, what I love to call going pre-algebra on a problem. Let's plot points, connect the dots, and say, well, that's weird. Or you could be a little bit more clever and say, let's begin at the point one, two, right here on our graph. And let's go right six units. That's what our delta x is. And down four units, that's what our delta y is. So if I were to go right six and down four, that would look like this. I think you would find that this is exactly parallel to that segment there, if they continued forever as lines. But the huge difference is, is I gave it a starting point that was different, and I gave it a vector that looks different uh, in the opposite direction. It turns out that I actually changed the magnitude. But that's not something we're going to study now, but you could easily start programming simple video games in two dimensions with this. Think 1980s uh, classic games. And you could start uh, doing some little preparations for how the math looks in two dimensions. All right, up next will be three dimensions.